Nobody likes to fail, but yet we all do. We're not perfect, and we, when we try something, especially when we try something new, most likely we're going to fail. So today we're going to talk about why this is actually a good thing. Welcome to the Julia Monte channel. If we're just meeting, I am Julia Monte. I'm a women's fiction author, and today we're going to talk about failure. So don't leave. It's not. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about why failure is a good thing. So this time of year, uh, there's a lot of commencements. So this is the summer of 2021 when I'm recording this, and you, there's a lot of commencement speeches, right? So there's famous people that will be uh, called by universities to give speeches, and there's you know non-famous people but that uh, have done well, and so they're invited to the colleges to give speeches, and, it's, and they're they're inspiring. I like to listen to them. Uh, I am a college instructor, so maybe that's probably why I like them because. I know that uh, it really inspires students and it's the end of this journey for, um, you know, for high school and college students. And it's nice, right, to have these inspiring speeches about the future and, and what it holds for them and that, um, you know, all the work they've done now they, they can celebrate. So I, I like it. I like um, I've been, you know, not a college graduate for a very long time. Uh, so, but I like listening to them because I think that it applies to everybody. And sometimes we forget. We forget as people who, whether you've gone to college, haven't gone to college, wherever you are in your, you know, in your journey in life, uh, we forget that. Yes, there, there's, uh, all, there, there's, a, there's a future out there waiting for us, and there's a lot of good things that uh, that can happen for you. And so sometimes listening to these speeches. It's, um, you know, it's inspiring no matter who you are, whether you're a college graduate or not, right? Or you're graduating or not. We have kids that are graduating. Uh, just wherever you are in life, it's nice to listen to those. So I, I will search for them on YouTube sometimes to say, okay, let's see if there's one that's interesting. And I came across uh, this, this, this speech, and it was not a, uh, it was not for college students. It was not a commencement address. It was the uh, BYU president, Kevin Worthen. And he was giving the speech because he was a brand new president at the time. This was in 2015. And he came up to give a speech. And um, so it's, it's, it's a long speech. And you can listen to it. It's, it, it is good. Um, but what kind of caught my attention was pretty much at the beginning of his speech. And he says, um, my remarks today focus on one reality about the quest for perfection. It is a truth that is hard to deny, yet difficult to accept. It is this. We will all fail more than once every day so i thought hmm, that's that's interesting and it's not uh you know here you are a new president i'm going to talk to the kids about failing okay <laughs> um let's see what he's got to say right so it was, it was interesting um but he, he does go on to explain why he wants to talk about this so he says you know since um where was it um he, well he, he explains that uh he, he's not trying to you know, kind of demotivate the students. He's actually wanting to talk about this uh, because it's 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 a truth that's hard to accept. Um, and he says that we focus on the wrong thing. What we tend to do is that we focus on the word perfection and not the word quest, which again got my caught my interest. I thought you know, that that's interesting. That's true. We all focus on being perfect and doing everything right when we should be focusing on that quest, on that journey to perfection, right? What is it? Or, and even perfection I don't really like because I don't think we really ever get there. We're never perfect at anything. I don't care how many times I write my novels and rewrite them and edit them and revise them. They're not going to be perfect. And even if they're perfect for me, they're not, they might not be perfect for my reader. It just depends, right? So, um, so I really like that, and I thought uh, that's that's very interesting. Okay, uh, because we do kind of all seek to be perfect at whatever we do, we we do, right? So it's, if we're writers, we're we're seeking to be a perfect writers, or we're seeking to be perfect parents, or you know, be a, a perfect ideal weight, which we know we might be, we might get there. Like one day I'm at my perfect ideal weight, and the next day I eat a burrito, and I'm no longer at my perfect ideal weight because it fluctuates daily. So. We understand that that perfection doesn't last, but we we, we still are uh, kind of disappointed if we're not there. Um, but he kind of continues on this, right? So he says, I'm, I'm, "I don't want to talk about the word perfection." And what I want to say, um, 
he said, is that in our quest for perfection, how we respond when we fail, we ultim will ultimately determine how well we will succeed. And that's the line that I really love, okay? Because it's exactly true. It's not the, it's not that perfection. It's not, you know, uh, getting there, not getting there. It is honestly our attitude and the way that we perceive and the way that we react to failing. Because like he says, we're going to, you're going to fail. You're, you're not going to write the perfect novel. It's not going to be the perfect novel. You're going to write a good novel, hopefully, and it's going to sell well, but it's not going to be perfect. And so if that is your goal, right, if that's your, your sort of where you want to get, you want to have perfection or you want to have a certain thing, it's, it, you're going to fail. And uh, and again, you may reach it at one point, but it's not going to be uh, something that's going to be sustainable forever because it's just not. It's just not part of life. Life just doesn't work that way. So uh, what we need to focus on then means when we fail, because we will, is how we react to it. And if we react in a positive way, if we react in a, a way that helps us, that helps lead us to eventual success, then you, then you're going to do better, right? But if you react uh, negatively, let's say that you have been trying to get your book published for years, right? And you, you've submitted it, you've done everything that people tell you to do, and yet you can't seem to get an agent, you can't seem to get a publisher interested, or you can't seem to, you know, you don't want to learn the whole self-publishing and you're just devastated and you think, okay, I'm just done. You know, I've tried and tried and tried and, uh, and, and this is just not for me. It's just not going to work. And I'm just not meant to be a writer. You could have that attitude, right? And you could have that response to failure. But what does that lead to? It leads to a, a, a book that never gets published. And to me, that's very sad because instead of what we're going to talk about today, what can you do instead of that? Like, what can you respond? How can you respond rather than just saying, I give up, I'm never going to get published, or nobody's ever going to read my books. So there are other things you can do. So what we're going to talk about then is how to fail well. <laughs> you want to do that well. And, ha and to understand, like, you know, what to go back and figure out, like, why is it that you're failing? Because if you can do that, if that's your response, right, is I'm going to figure out why I'm failing and why I'm not doing well, then you're going to be able to fix that and you're going to be able to move on and actually do well. Okay, so let's talk about failing well. So failing well is changing that attitude, changing that attitude of, uh, the, you know, I must not be good enough, I might, I, I, whatever it is, right, whatever it is that you are feeling into the attitude of, yes, I failed, I'm new at this, and I, there are a few things that I need to do then to fix it, or I need to figure out why I'm failing. Whatever it is, right? Even if it's something simple, like, well, not simple, but dieting, right? Dieting is not simple, because if it was, I would be much thinner. But what uh, what is simple is that I kind of know what to do to lose weight. I know I need to exercise, and I know I need to eat healthy food, um, no burritos, no pizza, you know, I need to not eat that stuff, but I still do. <laughs> and so that's, that's where my failure is. So I, 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 it's really easy. I can figure it out, but sometimes with writing or with other things, it's not so easy. Right. Um, and, and, um, once you do figure it out, having the attitude that I am, I can fix it and I'm going to fix it. Um, and not just saying, well, it's because of other things that I'm not doing well. It's because, you know, editors hate my books. It's because I didn't get to go to college and get an MFA. It's because of whatever. It's, it's not. It's not because of those things. But if it is, there are things you can fix, right? Or let's say that um, th nobody is just seeing the genius of the book and you think, well, I, but I don't really want to self-publish. Okay, but what if you do? What if you learned it and you did publish it? What if you've been trying for five years to get traditionally published and it just hasn't worked for whatever reason? And it doesn't mean that it, your book is not good. It can mean that, but it doesn't mean that. If it does mean that, then you need to fix the book. You need to learn the craft better. You need to do other things. But if it's just, it could be a million other things. There's just, if there's huge competition in traditional publishing, it may be a topic that you're writing that just isn't hitting the, the, the editors in New York the way that it should. 
So uh, you don't want to self-publish it, but what if you did? What if you learned a little bit? What if you started to understand that? What if you got some help so that people did it, right? So there are things that you can do rather than having that um, attitude of just, I'm going to give up or I, it's, I'm not meant to do this because then it is failure because the book doesn't get published. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's just kind of changing that attitude and figuring out what um, what you can do. And really kind of that's my second point is that what, how do you figure it out? Like figuring out what is the problem, what is not working. And I think that that's a big part of uh, learning how to fail well is to evaluate. And I think that's the step that people miss. They don't go back and evaluate and say, okay, why am I failing? Why am I not doing well? Um, and so if you can figure that out, if you can go and say, okay, th I'm going to evaluate this and see what the problem is and fix that problem, then the next time you may fail better, right? You may, may get a response back from an editor saying, I really liked this, but for whatever reason, it's not right for us. So there are steps that I think a lot of people don't realize um, that happens in failure. So at first you just plan out fail, like you just don't do it, right? You don't reach your goal. Uh, the next time that you try, you may reach part of your goal. I saw this really cool video, you might, might have seen it, this little kid and he's on a skateboard. It's like, looks like he's like three years old or in the end he falls and he falls and he falls and he keeps getting, he's trying to, I don't know if he's trying to do a trick or if he's trying to jump off or he's trying to do something and he keeps doing it and he keeps, and he falls and you're like, oh my God, that looks painful. Where's this parent, kid's parent? But he keeps doing it and he keeps falling, falling, falling. And finally he gets back on and he does his little trick and he, and he does it, right? He doesn't fall off his skateboard and he does it in that. Each time that he did that, he was getting better and better and better and better. And that is failing well, right? Because each time that you're failing, you're failing less, you're failing better, you're doing better. And if we analyze what is going wrong and what can I do better next time that I send my book out, what can I do, how can I fix this? You're going to uh, end up failing, you're going to end up failing less and you're going to eventually get to a place where you're not failing at all. You're actually succeeding. So one of the things I think that we need to do, which is my third point here, is that we need to look at failure from a different angle. Um, because what we do is we look at the end result and we say, well, we failed. We didn't get the book published. Okay. But I think that there were so many successes along the way that you ignored, right? That I ignored when I, when I first started writing. So it's like, oh, I'm failing. I didn't get, you know, I got rejected. Yes. But what, what were all the positive actually successes along the way? Just actually finishing the book is a huge success. The fact that you, you allotted time in your day to actually write, you know how many people don't do that? Okay. So that is a success and tell yourself, I did that, right? I, 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 I allowed time to write. I actually finished writing my book. I did a search for agents. So I have this list of agents that I'm going to contact. So that is a, a successful. This. So again, there are steps that you do along the way. It's not just like uh, the end goal and it's a huge failure at the end. There were all kinds of positive steps that you took along the way and you didn't fail at that. You did finish the book. You did uh, leave time for writing. You did find an agent. You did do various things. Okay. Maybe you got a really nice rejection and that, that again is a positive step towards that eventual publication. So looking at things differently and uh, celebrating all the successes along the way makes you feel less of a failure. You start to say, okay, I did do all these things and these were all positive. These were all successes. So yes, I, maybe the ultimate thing, you know, like for me, for example, like if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight and I want to lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever, but I've only lost two this, whatever, this week, this month. Okay, well, that's a failure, right? I did not reach my goal, but it's also not a failure because I did something. I didn't gain weight, right? So I did lose two pounds and that is helpful and that's that helps you along the way. So look at it from a different angle. Look at it from the angle of where are my successes? It's not just failure. As if all you're looking at is the failure. And in this business, you do have to get used to it because there is a lot of rejection. There is a lot of failure. Let's say that you even find a publisher and you get published and you're so excited because you think, okay, I did it. I didn't fail. I got my book published, right? Awesome. Now starts the part about trying to sell it. How many books did you sell? Did the readers buy your book? 
Did to, and then again, you can start feeling like a, like a failure. Uh, and I, I know writers that do this. It's like, okay, I didn't hit this this list. Right? I didn't hit this New York Times Business USA. This, uh, it's like you are a published author and you're actually selling books and you didn't reach this milestone here yet. And you are feeling like a failure. Really? <laughs> I, I, I don't get that. So don't do that right so celebrate all these and look at it from the angle of all the things that you are doing and how you're succeeding rather than just focusing on this one thing that lasts again this long and then all of a sudden it's done and you yeah you've reached it but now you're looking for your next goal anyways and now you're again feeling like a failure it's just it's just such a horrible roller coaster and you don't want to do that you don't want to do that you want to look at it from all the angles everything that you're doing to get better and to succeed and then, then you have the next challenge and you take the next challenge, but you don't look at it as, okay, if I don't get this, then I'm a failure because it's honestly not true. Okay, so what do you do then? You take the next step. You take the next step to get better. So whatever that may be, read more books to get become a better writer, take courses to become a better writer, write your next book and make that a better book than the last book. Forget the la the, the one you just wrote. If it's, if it's not working, if you know, so I'm not saying like continue to do, you know, like beat a dead horse, right? So continue to, to try to sell your book for 20 years if this book just isn't working. You can, you know, writers have done that and they've become huge successes. But also continue to write other books. So take the next step. Don't just get stuck on this one thing and it has to work this way. And I have to, you know, otherwise I'm failing. I'm failing. It's not true. So we have to learn as writers, especially as humans, but as writers, we have to learn how to fail well. And it's not to get devastated, not to, uh, you know, for a short time, you can cry for a little while if something didn't go wrong, but then get over it, right? <laughs> go on and take the next step to, to continue to improve and do better rather than focusing on this one thing or that, that one failure or saying, I'm just not meant to do this or it's never going to happen for me. It will happen if, you, if you're persistent, if you continue to, to improve, you continue to get out there, you continue to meet people in the industry, you continue to befriend other writers, you become part of the community, and eventually it will happen and you're going to do well and you, continue, you will fail as our BYU president said, you're going to continue to fail every day at many things, so just let it you know, let it, uh, let it go and just continue to, to continue to work because, um, it's just part of life, you know, it's part of life. And the more we just go with the flow and not let it bother us, the happier we're going to be and the more successful we're going to be because we're going to continue to work to try to get better rather than just get bogged down on this one thing that didn't work. Okay. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if it was, please hit the like button and please share this with other writers and with other people in your family who you think might enjoy it. And I will see you again next week.